Home buyers are afraid of、uh, not getting the home that they paid for. China's property market is in a bunch of trouble. A collapse in China's real estate sector has been a major impediment to the country's recovery from the shocks of the COVID-19 pandemic. What's at stake? Healthy financial markets and a key driver of global economic expansion. Let's see how it affects the economy in Hong Kong. And the longest losing streak on record in Hong Kong's 4.6 trillion dollar stock market is hurting the city's financial industry. Hong Kong's efforts to revive its dwindling stock market are merely stopgap measures, according to economists, as a turnaround in fortunes for Asia's main financial city would require a significant improvement. In China's economic prospects, Hong Kong's government has been attempting to stimulate turnover and revitalize the dormant stock market for months, with the most recent announcement by its leader John Lee of an immigration scheme linked to investments and a reduction in stamp duty on stock transactions. However, the region's primary financial center and gateway to the world's second-largest economy is a shell of its former self, as international investors minimize their exposure to China. Which they see is becoming increasingly isolated due to its opaque rules, faltering real estate market, and crackdowns on private enterprise. Hong Kong is one of the world's top stock markets, valued at over 4.3 trillion dollars, trailing only the U.S., Japan, China, and Europe. However, it performs poorly in terms of turnover, averaging 11.3 billion dollars per day between January and June, compared to 261 billion for the Nasdaq. 27.9 billion dollars for Japan, and 77.9 billion dollars for China's Shenzhen market. New share offerings in Hong Kong have failed. Dicky Wong, executive director of research at Kingston Securities, said the stamp duty drop was expected. It may spark a short-lived rebound in the Hong Kong stock market. He added, "The Hang Seng Stock Index opens new tabs, and the Hang Seng China Enterprises Index opens a new tab, are both down more than 11 percent this year." The HSI opened a new tab at 22.7 in late January and is now around 17,000. Daily turnover has dropped below 80 billion Hong Kong dollars on many occasions since the second quarter, dropping from an average of 160 billion Hong Kong dollars in 2021. Liquidity is clearly down due to foreign investors reducing exposure to China, as many investors, including ourselves, access China shares. Via Hong Kong, said Rob Bruis, portfolio manager at UK-based asset management Aubrey Capital Management. Eddie Tam, CEO of Hong Kong-based Central Asset Investments, believes funds are not finished reducing their exposure to China, and international investors are not nearly finished with the selling off of Hong Kong stocks. Grappling with a mounting debt crisis as investors ramp up calls for fiscal stimulus to boost the economy. China's economy has faltered this year. Following a brief post-COVID recovery, hampered by a protracted housing crisis, high debt levels, and slow demand, volumes have fallen precipitously, wreaking havoc on Hong Kong's hundreds of modest, unassuming brokerage firms. According to local media, a record 47 of the Hong Kong Exchange's 638 trading participants closed business last year. Chinese enterprises listed in Hong Kong, such as Tech Behemoths, Tencent Open New Tabs, and Alibaba Opens a New Tab, account for the majority of the turnover on the Hong Kong Exchange, making Hong Kong vulnerable to China's fortunes. The current trading volume is incredibly low, and buyers are hesitant to buy because there are no other investors present. This is lowering stock prices, so we see the Hang Seng Index going from 20,000 to 18,000 to 17,000. Market sentiment is even worse than 2008, stated Alex Wong, a partner of Alex Key Wong Asset Management Company, who's been investing in the area for over 30 years. Local investors who've been buying in Hong Kong for many years were discouraged, while the younger generation was more interested in trading U.S. stocks. He explained, "It's very difficult to attract new money, so you have a structural problem. China's been experiencing double-digit growth for so long, and this year it's only rising a little more than five percent." Research professor and political economist Xiaoru Shirley stated that the current forecast for 2024 is 4.5 percent, which is terrible. China's percentage of global GDP peaked at 18.4 percent in 2021. Lin believes China's long-term growth rate will be 2.3 percent by 2035, about comparable to Europe and the United States. So everything about China over the last couple of decades has changed. There is little inflation and population losses will not have a significant impact on productivity in China for at least a decade, so China will slow 
but not as significantly as some experts predict. The decrease looms as China grapples with the legacy of its one-child policy, instituted by Mao Zedong and maintained long after his death, which created a vast pool of unmarried men and contributed to population decline. Now that they've lifted it, nobody wants to have kids because it's too expensive. Even as China's population dwindles, Xi remains hesitant to accept immigration. He doesn't believe in diversity, which is why he couldn't stand it when Hong Kong residents sought to be separate and do things a little differently. I think the issue of diversity is very challenging for him, she remarked. The Tibetans, Uyghurs, Hong Kongers and even the Taiwanese are the bane of his existence. They're people who believe that they're unique. She claimed that Xi cannot understand that people can have several identities, such as being Chinese and Hong Kongers, Xi Jinping says. No, it's mutually exclusive, he said, and I believe that's what's causing so much work for him and making it impossible to drive ethnic nationalism. I believe that it's impossible to administer a vast country while always focusing on uniformity and top-down control. Lin stated that diminishing population is to be predicted in many ways, and migration could address both population and innovation issues. The reason a country moves forward on the value chain is talent, he remarked. Without immigration, you'll be unable to attract the world's most talented people. You need to rely on your own people. How can you rely on your own people if your culture lacks the foundation for innovation? Lin stated that while China seeks to show the world an alternative to democratic capitalism, it's missing the big picture. We're in a competition to figure out the most essential things in the world, which concepts superior and who can generate more innovation. I'm not referring to computer chips or technology, but rather the best concepts about how to think and govern. How do you raise a youngster who thinks differently than his parents and grandparents, Lin stated. Innovation is at the heart of what we need to think about. The commercial dependency between Hong Kong and mainland China, combined with the region's prominence as a vital financial hub, highlights Hong Kong's economic vulnerability to negative developments in its larger counterpart. The close ties between investment flows, stock markets and financial institutions indicate that any downturn in China's market might send shockwaves across Hong Kong's economic corridors. Tourism, a crucial component of Hong Kong's economy, may face headwinds as a result of China's slowing economy, reducing tourist numbers and related services. Additionally, the real estate market, which has historically been influenced by broader economic patterns, may experience swings in demand and property values. To summarize, while the collapse of China's market remains hypothetical, the deep economic linkages between Hong Kong and mainland China need continued vigilance and strategic planning. Navigating future economic downturns necessitates a complex approach that includes strong policies, diverse economic strategies and worldwide collaboration to ensure Hong Kong's economic resilience in the face of changing global economic landscapes. We'd love to hear your ideas, so please leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share for even more amazing views. Adios.